So this afternoon we have several talks that are combined with, with uh, paths, curves, fonts, metaposts, and so on. And the first speaker that should appear here in a second, um, live from his breakfast coffee in uh, Vermont, is Jim Haveron, and he will make the bridge between metapost and asymptote as a different tool uh, for drawing nice curves. So, and now I'm curious if he will appear. Hello, hello, afternoon. Well, it's afternoon here, anyway. Okay, okay welcome. So I want to talk about using asymptote like metapost. Um, and the, uh, the, the abstract is that uh, asymptote is a descriptor vector graphics language for technical drawing that fits well with tech, LaTeX, and friends, and I think it deserves to be more widely known. So um, that's why I'm talking about it. One appealing thing is that it's in part based on the algorithms from Metafont and Metapost, but it extends those to three dimensions. Um, I'm going to discuss a couple of workflow things that a beginner to the system, particularly a beginner who's coming from Metapost, might like. And uh, the, the, the main one is the using a single source file to output many related graphics. Okay, so uh, so the introduction. Uh, again, I don't think that asymptote is as widely known as it deserves to be. Asymptote is a powerful descriptive vector graphics language. It uses a natural coordinate-based framework for technical drawings, and LaTeX, of course, tech, typesets the, the text and the equations. To me, um, the, one of the appealing things is that it is a good impedance match for what, what goes on between my ears. When I think about a graphic, I think something like, let's say it's a 3D graphic. I think something like, okay, so draw the axes, and I want to do an orthographic projection. I'm going to be at, you know, 10, 5, 2, and looking at the origin, and I want to put a, a sphere over here and a box there with a red line between them. That, all those things are, uh, are easily said in this system. Of course, there are other systems that also have this capability, but uh, I'm talking about this one at the moment. So uh, uh, basically, what, what I just tried to say is that it's mathematically oriented. It's not kind of a drag, uh, a drag, drag and, uh, and drop system. It's inspired by Metapost, but it has a more standard C++-like programming syntax. I, I don't know, I always found Metapost very hard to program in. It's IEEE floating points, and it fully generalizes Metapost path construction algorithm to three dimensions. So it's time for a picture. So let's see if I can work this thing. Uh, there we go. Okay, uh, so I'm at the, um, the asymptote uh, web page. So uh, asymptote.sourceforge.io slash gallery slash 3D graphs with a D is capitalized. And I just picked a graphic because I thought it was a, a, a reasonable graphic to use for this purpose. Where'd we go? There we go. Okay. And uh, you can, oops, sorry. You can see that it uh, does a nice job drawing pictures. I mean, you know, the uh, the figure does the kinds of things that I want figures to do. It, it does a good job drawing the planes in the back, le the, the back, the, the left side and the bottom. It uh, draws the the sphere part very well. You get uh, the letters drawn in LaTeX and the, uh, uh, you know, the different colors and the arrows. And I don't know, it all looks the way that I want my graphics to look. So that's, that's appealing. Um, a, a person probably is saying to themselves, well, you know, what, what does the source code look like? So fair enough. So here is the source code. And uh, to, to me, without going into it at great length, I'm not going to go into it at great length. It, it looks like the kind of programming language that I'm using when I'm not using this. That is to say that uh, it looks like a standard programming language. The lines end in semicolons. You declare things. All the things seem pretty routine. So it is something that I, if I put it down for two months and pick it up again, because I have some bug and I need to fix the bug, I'm not saying to myself, oh, how do you do that again? It, it all has the sense of the kinds of things that a person usually does. And just very, very, very briefly here, you import the three-dimensional code, you import the math code, you put into the preamble of the tech document that is used to draw the, uh, to, to make, for example, the uh, uh, the lettering on the, on the diagram you just saw, use package BM kind of thing. There's some parameters and the current projection is perspective from location four comma one comma two looking toward the origin. Then you draw the surfaces, the back, the, the, the left, back, and bottom, and et cetera. You start drawing the figure, and it all does what you'd think it would do. 
So I find that appealing because, like I say, one of the things that characterizes working in this language is that I don't work with it for months at a time. So the fact that it, the fact that it does what I expect it to do is a big plus for me. Okay, so let's see, uh, back, to the, uh, back to the discussion that I was having. The second point is that it generates high quality output, high quality PostScript, OpenGL, PDF, SVG, WebGL, V3D, and PRC vector graphics. So alphabet soup, even if you don't know what a lot of those letters mean, I just want to discuss the, the one, the PRC vector graphics. So if you are making a, a PostScript uh, excuse me, a PDF output file, and you want one of these things where you reach out with your mouse, you draw in a 3D graphic, you reach out with your mouse and you click on it, and you can, can, can turn it and look in different sides, pick it up, look underneath kind of stuff, that's PRC. Okay. And, and as well, it does a 3D web, 3D vector WebGL graphics. I want to show that too, so let's see if I can manage to work the system to do that. Here we go. Again, this is from the Asmatope webpage, and I just kind of picked a graphic here, this one here. It's called Gaussian Surface ASY, and it's, uh, you know, that's WebGL. I mean, that's all happening in the web page. How hard is it to draw? Well, you know, it's not hard at all. The, it does what you think it would do. You import the 3D graphic drawing, you make the figure be 200 by 200, that's postscript points. But anyway, your current projection is a perspective from 10, 4, 8. There is, you recognize the, uh, you know, the, the, the relevant function, and you draw the rectangle underneath it, and it's all pretty straightforward. I mean, of course, the things have to be learned, but it is at least not some kind of crazy stuff. So I, I, that's appealing for me because probably most people watching this video know that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box. So it's helpful to me to be able to work with things that are, uh, that are familiar. Um, one of the things that I like about it that, that is that it recognizes a problem that I've had many times, I'm sure everybody watching this video has had, you have some figure and it, you need to adjust it. You might say want to scale it up to be 1.1 as big as it is now. And when you do that, you go, okay, now that now it's the right size, it fits where it's supposed to go. But, but wait, I scaled up the letters too, and I, I didn't want to do that. So it has some sense that some things are scalable and some things are not scalable. And I think that's a, that's a big plus for me. I, that, that makes, that, that, that makes a, a lot of the jobs that I do a lot easier. And then finally, just something fancy, you can run it in your browser without installing it. Uh, to the Asmatote web application, so I, th I think that's zippy, so I want to show that. Come on, there we go, and there we go. And you, you of course, type in the Asmatote over here, and the outcome, you know, the output appears over there, and uh, uh, it's nice. So you don't have to, if you want to just try it for 20 minutes, you don't have to install it on your computer. Okay. Okay, so, um, so uh, I, 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 I'm imagining, <laughs> That, that most of the folks, maybe every person watching this video is saying to themselves, why do you just use Tixie? And uh, so I, I want to address that rather than wait till, wait till somebody actually asks the question. So uh, Tixie is very widely used as we told it's a much smaller user base. I personally have not used Tixie very much and I haven't used it lately at all. But when I started my latest project, which is a discouragingly long time ago, anyway, when I started my latest project, uh, I, uh, I wanted to look around and see what to use for the graph and I compared the different things that were available at the time, I found that Asmatote had some relevant technical advantages, including native 3D graphics, and I also found Tixie harder to program. Now, now uh, uh, that may have changed and people could say, well, you don't realize that. Maybe, 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 maybe. Obviously, your mileage may vary. Another difference between the two relevant for this conversation is that it, it, the basic paradigm in Tixie is that your figures are in your document generated when the document is generated. In Asmatote, the basic paradigm is that they're generated outside your document. Now, I understand you can absolutely generate standalone graphics in Tixie and absolutely you can include asymptote code in a document, but the basic paradigm is what I said. And we uh, all have experience sometimes if you go against the basic paradigm, it isn't that everything breaks, but it's just that things get to be a little hard, it gets to be a lonelier place. So I like it when the, 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 you, know, you have some idea what the system kind of is tuned for. 
uh, one of the things that for me, uh, I didn't want to use Tixie, was that in the past I had a bad experience with a, a, a book from a long time ago w using PS Tricks. And then the LaTeX world switched to PDF LaTeX. So it was, it was a long time ago. But it, it made an impression on me. It left me with a strong preference for a dependence chain that is shorter and broader over one that's taller and thinner. You have a lot of prerequisites for your document. All these things need to work for your document to come out. I don't know, that makes me nervous, in part because of that past experience. So I want to generate the figures independently from the document. Uh, again, your mileage may vary, and if I was generating a five-page document for calculus class lecture, uh, I, I, that's all fine. But, but anyway, that was, uh, that was my, part of my reason. Okay, finally, time, 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 to, time to get to the main point. So in Metapost, I wrote a book many years ago where most of the graphics are in Metapost for a person who cannot draw, being able to, for instance, tell the computer that you want to put this equidistant from those two points instead of dragging it and going, that looks halfway, is a big help. The basic structure in Metapost is that one file holds many figures. This will output a graphic into a file numbered one and another graphic into a file number two, the, the gray material. So begin fig one, begin fig two, a figure drawing commands go, go in the middle. If you're drawing, for example, uh, figures for your calculus lecture, then you might put at the top of the file something like declare vector thickness equals 0 0.8 points and use that in lots of the figures. So putting all the sources in the same file is convenient because you could change that parameter and, and, and make it do what, what you need, you know, if you want to make some small change. But having worked with Metapost, I was aware of some warts. And when I started my latest project, I was, I, I was a little, I wasn't sure I wanted to use it. For me, the two biggest warts are the lack of any real 3D ability and that programming in Metapost can be quirky. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, suffix variables? I don't know. Anyway, so when I saw the new Asmatote system, I saw a presentation by John Bowman, one of the, uh, one of the Asmatote authors at the San Francisco tech meeting and I was just blown away and I was eager to try it and it really it has been very good. I'll describe the two adjustments that may help a person coming from Metapost that took me some time to dope out and to fine tune to make them work the best way I could get them to work. The first one, the main one, uh, adjustment one, multiple figures per file. The basic paradigm in Asmatode is to have one figure per input file. And so uh, here's a skeleton of how to put multiple figures in a file. This will output the file test000.pdf containing a graphic with a diagonal red line. And so just to go through the code, uh, I declare string output underscore fn uh, to be test percent sign 03d and then, uh, you know, there's the semicolon that ends the line. So in case the letters are a little small for folks to see. Down here, I declare a picture, pick. Uh, I declare a pick num to be zero, an integer. And the unit size for pick is one centimeter. That means that if you, uh, if you make a, a, a tick at, uh, at one, then it's a centimeter from the tick at zero. And then I draw in that picture of a line that goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1, and I'm going to draw it in red. Okay. And then finally, I'll ship out that figure. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to take a pick num, which is 0, and put it into the output fn using the format command. And, uh, and then I'm going to put out the figure. That'll be the name of the figure. Put out the figure, and I'm going to put it in the format PDF. Okay, so I imagine that everybody can guess a lot of what's going on here, at least a lot of what's going on here, maybe everything that's going on here, but I want to make a couple points. The first is that output FN gives all the file names the same structure. So if you have lots of graphics, and my current book has more than 2,000 graphics, then it's easier to work with them. Of course, the, the, the string test percent sign 03D causes the picture number to be formatted as a three decimal place integer. I find that two decimal places in the file name is a little bit tight. You could run out. So three decimal places, I, I, I don't see myself running out. Okay, so that's the first tip. The second tip, I'm gonna go scoot back here for a second. I hope that's not annoying. I write pick num equals zero. And when I go to make the next picture, I write pick num equals one. And when I go to make the next picture, I write pick num equals two. I write pick num equals zero, pick num equals one, et cetera, rather than pick num equals pick num plus one, because it took me a while to figure this out. When you go back into a file that has 80 pictures and you're trying to fix a bug in picture number 53, oh man, 
you want you really want it to say pick num equals 53. <laughs> you don't want to be counting with your fingers you know one two three four five. no 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 that's bad and finally the last point um, because there because I'm outputting multiple pictures from a single source file I have to put in this pick command I have to say where for example I'm drawing this particular line I'm drawing it to, to the picture called PIC so that picture will appear with a diagonal line that's in red and if you leave out the PIC then it will draw the diagonal line in red to some picture but not to the picture that output that is to say because it drew it somewhere there's not an error message but you go to look at the figure that you think you're drawn and it doesn't have the diagonal red line in it and ah oh, oh, I forgot the pick so that's uh, you got you got to put the pick in all of those uh, in all those commands Okay, so again, the, the, uh, the format there is not all that hard, but uh, I basically copy that over and over again for all the pictures that I draw. I want to talk about a second adjustment that is related to the first. Um, the, the, with the prior adjustment, the, the goal was if you have a lot of figures all in the same file, you have picture one, picture two, picture three, picture four, then you can, for example, have parameters at the top of the file, or maybe you define a function to do a certain thing, and, and it's convenient to have it all in one file. Even just sometimes you say, oh, wait, I want to make this look like figure 53, except I want, so you go up and copy figure 53 down. So it's uniformity that I'm after. You can have some parameters, such as font size, for example, and describe them all just in the one file. But likewise for uniformity, you also want to have a consistency across a set of files. So in my book, for example, I have uh, five chapters, and I have an asymptote file for each of the five chapters. I have to have a number of asymptotes files for each of the five chapters. And I want them all to use the same colors for, let's say, the uh, finite state machines. Okay, so I, I want to somehow have something like a single file styled at ASY that gets input into every asymptote source file. It's actually, mine is actually called j.asy because I, I def named it that way in the first place and wasn't thinking straight and now, now I'm pretty, lock pretty locked into it. So here, for example, is part of my style file for the most recent book, just as an example of the kind of stuff that you want in there. So I want, for example, to set the font size that's used to draw all the figures. It's a little bit smaller than regular font size. This is, this is small, LaTeX small. That's why it has all the silly decimal places. And then I want to set the colors. I happen to set the colors using, uh, 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 when, I write, when I make the pictures, I use highlight color, background color, bold color, light color, very light color kind of stuff. And then I, I, I can change those without having to change the name of the colors by setting them, there's a certain amount of uh, abstraction there. But so I'm setting the colors that are used in all the graphics in the whole book. So in principle, I could adjust those. I've never done it, but in principle, I could adjust those. Okay, so I have this one file that works across all of my, uh, all of my asymptote input files. So where to put it? So there's, there's two cases, simple case and not so simple case. You can bring in a file with import file name, just exactly what you'd think it would do. If that file's in the list of directories searched by the asymptote system, then, then you're good, you're home free. And again, this is gonna work for 99% of the cases. So if you're a beginner, this is what you wanna do. For instance, asymptote has a standard file called settings that you often wanna bring in. Here we go, import settings. And maybe you want the output format to be PDF. So uh, uh, this will make the output format be PDF for all the all of the graphics in that file. The file, the place where asymptote searches is just what you think it would be if you're an experienced person. It looks first in the current directory, then it looks in the environment variable asymptote underscore dir, and then it looks in the directory given by asymptote underscore home, etc. It's just what you think it would be. So again, if you're a beginner, if you're looking to set up the system, this is just exactly what you're looking to do. However, I have a more complicated case. I provide the files for my book and I get repository because they're freely available. And uh, I've had bad experience in uh, trying to depend on people knowing how to get it working. So for example, people seem not to be able to set an environment variable. At least the kind of people who are downloading my book often seem to struggle with things like setting an environment variable. Maybe they're just not reading the instructions, I don't know. 
When those folks are unable to get it to go, they sometimes write me, and that certainly means time, but it sometimes means a certain amount of aggravation. They sometimes write you an angry email says, you know, it doesn't work, you know. Um, it, so if there's a way to I import files that doesn't require that, I'd be delighted. So I just got, wanted to comment that I have a way that does that. I'm more able to depend on people naming the download directory. That is to say, people who download the files always seem to use a, a limited number of, uh, of names. Uh, computing, because that's the, that's the name that I, uh, I use for the, uh, for the book. It's on theory of computing. At the, Git, the GitLab, I keep it on GitLab. The GitLab project directory is TOC, so people who clone the, the material often clone it to TOC. And if they download the zip, then that's called TOC master, so they often find the top, you often find that the top level directory is TOC master. And this covers like 99% of the cases, maybe 100% of cases, I don't know, but it covers almost all the cases. And so I can depend, I think, on people having a directory of one of those three names. So you can see where this is going. I wrote a routine to look through the path of the current file for one of those three strings and then do the searching for, for my style file based on that. So it's not a very sophisticated um, uh, file, it's kind of crude, but it, it will give a person some sense of what I've been, one of the things I've been trying to say the, the whole time, which is that it, uh, it is a regular programming language, at least regular enough for my purposes. So you get the current directory by issuing the command cd with, with an empty string. That's just how you do it. And then I do an R find for computing or TOC or TOC master. And I figure one of those three cases has got it covered. That those turn out to be eight, you know, eight, eight things I have to worry about. And then I write very ugly code to, to, to write those eight things. But it's all the kind of code that I'm used to writing on a daily basis. So I find it relatively easy to work with. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, so, th so, so that's all I had to say. Uh, Azotope does a great job with te drawing technical graphics. It deserves to be better known than it is. I urge people to give it a try. And to me, one of the things that's appealing about it was that adding some meta post like workflow makes it work even better. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay, thank you very much to Jim. Okay, uh, thank you very much to Jim. Uh, thanks for this impressive talk. Are there any questions? Yeah. I understand the idea uh, of having uh, figures outside of your main tech file. It's a great idea and so on, but there is a case for having them inside tech file. If I have a lot of settings like fonts, sizes, and so on in my documents, I want my labels to be with exactly the same preamble. And I can use uh, asymptote, use tech preamble or whatever, but when I change it, it will go out. So is there a way for uh, asymptote files to always have the same preamble as my main tech file. Thanks. So thanks for the question. Um, the, the answer is yes. Uh, I simply uh, read in a file, which I find in that directory that I illustrated at the end. I simply read in a file that is also read in by the book that contains uh, fonts, uh, the font sizes, uh, a variety of parameters used in the book. So the same file is shared between the book and the asymptote, um, but of course I have to find that file, and that was the reason for the shenanigans at the end. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? I don't see anybody. So. Thank you, Jim, very much again. Thank you for introducing us to your living room and um, <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, goodbye and thank you. <laughs>